So Elon Musk is continuing to rack up W's as he is speed running through reality at quite a crazy clip. We all know about the election win and his role in Doge. That's been talked about to no end, so I won't reiterate those, but obviously they were very big wins for him. But then he is continuing to have big W's with other leaders, uh, Zuckerberg in particular, following his lead with free speech and moving assets to Texas. And then he, huge wins at his companies as well. So we've got another in-flight test coming for SpaceX and Tesla has a lot of W's that we're going to talk about a little bit here. So I'm Matt Smith, you're Bradford Ferguson, and we're going to get into some of the latest news in this short video here. So a cyber truck was a resounding success. A lot of people said it would, Tesla would never make it, that it was vaporware. That was just another instance of Musk overhyping something on the stage. And they produced over 50,000 cyber trucks this year. I'm not quite sure on the exact number, but it's well over 50,000. And as the price is coming down on it, people are taking their reservations and choosing to accept delivery reception from people who have it. it's really good. And the cyber truck now has a self-driving. It drives incredibly smooth and safely. Matt, maybe you could talk a little bit about autonomy. We had GM basically scrap their cruise autonomy division and Tesla taking that vision only approach that Elon Musk talked about in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And we did have experts like Doug Demir Demiro, I forget how you say his name exactly, but basically saying Cybertruck would never get built as it is because it wouldn't be street legal. And then once it finally did launch like that, there was no kind of course correcting to say, oh, I was wrong. Um, but the, at the time, the Cybertruck did not have self-driving capabilities. So I remember a lot of people at the time too saying like, oh, see, they're going to have to do a whole new model. It's going to take years for FSD to actually launch on Cybertruck. Then of course, to, they just go ahead and launch it a couple months later and it's phenomenal. So yeah, the self-driving capabilities, not only just like how good the software is, but the huge flywheel that they have in terms of their data processing and the huge team that they've got, the GPU cluster that they have are continuing to build. Like this is a massive advantage that frankly, nobody else has. There's been a lot of talk about Waymo recently and the kind of success that they have in building out. And it sure is accurate to say that they're the leader in the space. But when you actually dig deep into the economics, I think their model is just has a fundamental flaw and that it's always going to be more cost effective uh, and less universal than Tesla's approach. So Tesla went with the harder approach of a universal vision based uh, approach to self-driving. I think they've essentially cracked that now. And it's just a, a matter of time before I think everyone realizes how big of an advantage they have. One of the things which I think is the most important, we've been saying this for a while on this channel, is the most important factor right now for Tesla in general is the rate of improvement mm -hmm. of their uh, critical miles per critical safety uh, intervention. Uh, so this is not just any time you interfere because you don't like the way it's driving or, or whatever, but there was actually an accident that would have happened had you not taken over. There's almost none of those now with, with the current version of the self-driving software. And about three months ago, Elon was saying that they thought in Q2, they, they would get safer than a human. Uh, just last night in Elon's interview, he actually said that it would, in about three months from now, they think they're going to be safer than a human. This is an absolutely huge milestone. And so you went from like maybe in the back half of Q2 to actually, based on Elon's comments, very early in Q2. Um, this is improving at a very rapid rate, and it's going to be an absolutely massive year, I think, for self-driving. Yeah, it, you look at the the autopilot, the uh, full self-driving a year ago, it could not complete my commute. Uh, my com commute is a short six mile commute. I, I couldn't complete a commute without uh, multiple disengagements. And you know, probably every other time was a safety critical disengagement. So I would have a, like a safety critical disengagement every like 10, 15 miles. Now on the new version of the software, I've gone over 700 miles and not had a safety critical disengagement. It drives incredibly smooth and it's a real delight to use the software. So it's just an, another validation of Elon's approach. And we believe Tesla's answer is the most cost effective. So they don't use LiDAR. So even if the cost of LiDAR comes down, you just don't have that period. The cost of the computer in the car is much lower and Tesla is collecting massive amounts of data, which other people don't have that, um, the scale of real world data collection that Tesla has. Maybe you could talk now about the humanoid robot and 
the decisions Tesla's made with regards to the hand and AI that they using in self-driving and you know, what that's caused some of the other players to do. Yeah, this was another thing Elon touched on last night is they have the most advanced hand essentially. And he's talking about 22 degrees of, of freedom on the hand and it actually feels like a human hand. And to really, when you think about the work that human beings do in the real world, most of it is, is with our hands. Of course, a big piece of it is with our brains and that's where the software comes in. And Tesla essentially is able to leverage the entire you know, like substrate of software that they built for their self-driving, both like gathering in real world data, training their GPU, you know, clusters with that data that they're getting in and then having models that they're shipping out into the real world. They've, they've got an existing infrastructure that is poised to just take advantage of this uh, capability to make the, the software, to make the brains much more capable. And this is opposed to what Boston Dynamics was doing for years, where you essentially just programmed in sets of motions and they were impressive, but not particularly useful from an economic standpoint. So what Tesla is able to do now is they've got like the hardware very close to being ready for prime time. They've got the whole system for being able to get the, the brains of the robot a lot more capable. And I think this approach is going to prove out to be the right one. We already know about Tesla's manufacturing prowess. We already know about Tesla's, you know, ability to ship FSD updates as we've already spoken about with them essentially cracking autonomy uh, already. So you, you marry those two things together on, on the humanoid realm. And I think it's pretty clear that this is going to be a massive update. The value that the humanoid bots are going to create, it, I think is very hard for the mind to comprehend, but it's, it's very real. And I think it's coming faster than most people realize. It could be in the, in the tens of trillions. We're seeing also with Boston Dynamics, they greatly decreased the weight of the robot. They essentially retired their old uh, robot. I think the new one can already do backflips, but <laughs> that's not really something for a factory. And they're adopting more of that end-to-end -end AI that Matt talked about. The really shocking win for me recently was Meta making all the changes they made. Mark Zuckerberg had a five minute video, maybe this was yesterday or the day before, where they talked about just scrapping the whole fact checking uh, regime that they have. They're moving towards adopting the community notes type of program that X uses to validate stories where the community writes a note if they think something is wrong or needs clarification and essentially that's the way it's going to go instead of censoring people and blacklisting them and throttling them down like with shadow bans the really funny thing that happened at the end of zuckerberg's video was he said that they were moving that trust and safety team from meta in in california and moving it to texas uh, and that just seemed to me like a huge validation of uh, what Elon's been doing. It is pretty hilarious. Zuckerberg today is basically what Elon was saying like two years ago that everybody was calling him like, yeah, a far right <laughs> conservative or, or whatever at the time. And I've seen a lot of people basically saying, oh, he's just floating with the political winds and he's not uh, serious about it on a personal mm -hmm. level. And frankly, I guess I don't really care um, how serious he's taking it. I I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt based on some of his comments recently. I think there is a tone shift even before it was really like popular or allowable for people to do so. He was giving some praise to Trump well before the election was decided, which was like something you just didn't do in Silicon Valley. Elon was definitely beat him to the punch on that. But he has made several, I don't know, overtures recently that make me think he's actually self-aware of, of some of these changes. But even if he's not, he's still implementing all these things that I think we would all agree are like the right things to do. Don't centralize truth keeping with some organization that's headquartered in California and has all those most liberal views and you're essentially only suppressing conservative voices. So it, it's certainly a huge validation of what Elon was doing. I don't know, maybe the fight is off now that they're more or less on, on the same page. Maybe there won't be a MMA match between Zuck and, and Elon anymore, but I think it's a, a huge validation of, of what Elon has been fighting for. And frankly, it's just amazing the level of impact Elon is having technically within AI and, and within social media, and then also within the political landscape. It's, it really is like, that's why people talk about Elon speed running reality, because it's no one human being, it seems would logically be capable of changing all these different aspects of society. 
it's almost like he's from the future. Starlink has also proven to be critical in times of natural disasters. You had the really bad floods in North Carolina. Starlinks were critical in getting those lines of communication reestablished and helping to, helping to find people. And now you have the terrible fires in Los Angeles and already news crews are using Starlink to share what's going on, but Starlink is going to be helping out there as well. It seems like Elon is very contrarian. He, he's a leader and typically when leaders uh, do something new, it's not popular at first. It might be a little bit of a shock, but we're seeing how those big leader moves from Elon have paid off. So I'm Bradford Ferguson. He's Matt Smith. We're re rebellioner.com. And with that, I'll say bye for now. Bye-bye.